So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So I would like to thank first Suzuki BGC and Auto Hub Group and Sir FJ Bus for allowing me to review this 2022 Suzuki XL7. First impressions in the exterior. This is based on a Suzuki Ortiga. It's almost exactly the one I drove uh, last December. Even the brochure says this is on a GLX variant, but there's only one variant here in the Philippines, so I don't know why they didn't bother putting the GLX name on it. Anyway, first impressions with the exterior. I like the look. At least they went different. Yes, there's multitude of cladding's here and there, but I don't mind the look. At least they tried to look different, unlike its competitor, the Mitsubishi Expander, because they just stuck on cladding and everything else, just being honest. But this one, at least Suzuki gave it a better look, muscular look. And as you can see here, you have a quad chamber, LED headlamps, and your LED RLs. And here are your fire lamps. Ground clearance is 200 millimeters. That is 10 to 15 millimeters more than the Ertiga on which is based on. Okay, just being honest as well, this is a very weird color. I will not name it on how it looks like. And here on the side, multitude of claddings here and there, even here on the side. Fake vent. I'm not sure if that's counted. And then you have a silver trim here on your, your side step. No, I won't count that side step. But there's a silver trim here and your roof rail is also wrapped in silver. And then we go here in the back. Uh, before that, the wheels. It's alright. Not the best, not the worst though. Here in the back of the XL7, still the same Volvo-ish taillights here. But this time, the back has a lot of... I'm not sure if this is gloss black. But I think it's just black. So that's different and also the rear bumper as well as you can see there's a rear skid plate as well so basically this is still an Ortega and the space inside does not change you have under storage here total under storage is 56 liters and then same figures with the boot space with the seats up you have 153 liters of space then with the third row down you have 550 liters of space and then all the seats down with 803 liters of space nothing has changed from the Ortega so with that it, I'll show you the interior. So this is the interior of the Suzuki XL7. Oh. Same as the Ortiga, but I don't know why this sounds a little bit better for some reason. Anyway. So what can I say here? It's exactly like the Suzuki Ortiga GLX that I drove a few months ago. But there are key differences I've noticed. You have gunmetal finish here on the D-shaped steering wheel. So that's actually a nice touch. And what sadly they did not carry over from the Suzuki Ortiga GLX Black Edition. The wooden trim here in the dashboard. But at least now it, there's a carbon fiber-ish trim here. Looks, I don't know, either way, carbon fiber trim or the wooden trim. I would have been happy with both. Yeah, literally same materials here and there to be honest. Although I don't remember this in the Ortega GLX, this uh, soft touch fabric here at the door. Everything else, plastic here and there, uh, bottle holder, cubby space on each side of the door. And same layout as well, I guess. I don't remember this as well in the GLX. This one has one blank button, then your parking sensor buttons, electronic stability control, and then adjustments for the brightness of the digital TFT display there in the middle, and the analog gauges as well. And then, how to adjust them, just push this one on the right side. This is funny with the XL7. You have a power and torque meter. And then, where, where is that? You have a G meter. There. I had no idea why you want that, but let me see how many G I can get with this XL7 when I get to drive it. No idea why they did, but at least it's fun to have. Then infotainment system here in the middle that supports Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and if you can get enough of that, this has Bluetooth mirror link as well. Yeah, responsive, similar to the Vitara and the Ertiga one, which is based on just a slight lag as you can see, but it's responsive enough. I already have experience with this. Yeah, same layout here, you have your physical buttons for your climate control and you have your knobs here. The aircon is also cold, by the way. Then one thing I missed in my Ertiga GLX review, you have two cup holders here. I noticed there were vents here, so this actually cools down your drink if you have cold drinks. Then you can simply shut off the air vents by just swiping this to the left, so in case you have coffee, it won't get cold right away. My water jug fits in the bottle holder on the door, but not in the central. And then above the cup holders, you have cubby spaces. Perfect for my phone. Then one 12 volt socket here, and then one USB port and one aux cord here on the right side. Glove box, 
still the same, quite small. I mean, look at that. That's how much. That's how much you can fit only. And yep, same material here with the seats, just fabric, but nice design and texture at least. And then central glove box that is. P I don't remember this at all. This is puny. I mean, it won't even fit my phone. This, I think this is one of the smallest central glove boxes I've ever tried out. And then manual handbrake here, same in the Ritiga as well as this one. No manual mode by the way. And then you have your shift lock here. No. So what else can I say here? Like, literally the space in the box is exactly like in the Suzuki Ertiga GLX. I have enough space here in the second row. As you can see, my legroom, feet room, headroom is excellent. Third row, just enough for me. I'm 5'4", by the way. Enough for small adults for the third row, but that is literally it. And the usual, you have two isofix anchor points and a central armrest here in the middle. No set cup holders, but at least there is. And the engine of this is the same in the Ertiga GLX. It's a one and a half liter, four cylinder, naturally at aspirated engine that produces 103 horsepower and 138 newton meters of torque. And this is the same engine as well, the K15B engine that powers the Suzuki Jimny. So with that, it let's go for a drive. So driving the 2022 Suzuki itself seven. To be honest, it feels exactly the same as the Ertiga. I mean, same engine, same torque. It's just been lifted up. That's what I want to know actually with this XL7. If it's a bit stiffer, a bit softer since the ride height's been lifted. And performance, yeah, it's still exactly the same. Brakes, so on and so forth. But at least, even though the, the ride's been lifted up, the, the steering remains light. Actually, this one has a little bit better weight for some reason only. And then you turn easy. Maneuverability and visibility is excellent. And it's just try over and slide over the floor it. Yeah, it will hesitate a bit, but once you get going, it gets going at least, but the engine will scream at you. Yeah, driving dynamics almost exactly the same with the Ortega. But let's go to a bumpy part of the test tool and see how this fares since this has been lifted up. Yeah, body lean, yeah, there is, I think, just a little bit more than the, than the Ortiga itself. And the G-meter, I have no idea why I'm using that. Just, just put that away. But at least it's a fun thing to have. And here, over humps. Hmm, okay. So this is a complete opposite with the Ortiga. Now since the suspension's been lifted up, the suspension's just a little bit more firmer. But surprisingly, the body lean is not as much on the Suzuki Ortega GLX, which I drove a few months ago. Yeah, and VH here, yeah, may not be the best, but it's good enough. It's not as like as good as the Expander Cross. But driving dynamics-wise, I think I just prefer this over the Expander Cross for some reason. Maybe I'll beat the firmer suspension, like. Yeah, it's, the suspension is firm, but it's no means an uncomfortable car still. Let's take a corner a little bit faster than usual. Ah, that's where I noticed the little bit of difference. There's body lean, but it's not as much as the Suzuki Ortega itself. Okay, so this is a bit more composed and a plant, right? I must say. And over humps here, bumps. It's all right. The ride is tolerable. I mean, the firm suspension, I mean, is tolerable. It's no, it's still comfortable nevertheless. And it's an Ortega, still, still exactly the same. The transmission may be a little bit sluggish only. However, it's geared for more towards fuel efficiency. So I, under, I understand the trade-off with it. I am just light-footed, by the way. I've not been flowing it that much. But sir, for some reason, the Ortiga did 11.8 kilometers per liter when I drove in the exact same test route. So I expect this to do almost the same uh, fuel figure with the Ortiga GLX. Yeah, and again, going back to the transmission, yes, it may be geared towards uh, fuel efficiency, but it's no means a slow car. I mean, I would have this as a, I would enjoy this as a daily, but would they take one over an expander cross? I would for two reasons. Number one, the value for money. This this is only less than one million one hundred thousand pesos, and their expander cross, to be honest, is quite more expensive than this. Number two, 
I would buy this for its fuel efficiency alone because the expander cross when I drove it were nowhere near uh, this fuel figures I think it's around seven kilometers per liter so yes I would take happily take this over an expander cross but would I buy one myself nah, I'm not sure I would still go with the Ertiga GL one GL manual but if I were given this Suzuki XL7 I would gladly take this home I wouldn't mind it at all so this Suzuki XL7 actually I won't mind taking this home exactly the same with the GLX on which it's based on still fuel efficient actually a bit better to dive better insulated the door tad if you heard earlier is way better so that concludes my review of the Suzuki XL7 I would like to thank uh, Suzuki BGC, Sir FJ Bass, Sir Renan, and Miss Mary for allowing me to review this 2022 Suzuki XL7. So, hope you guys like and subscribe, and I will see you with more future car reviews. Bye bye.